Section 6.2, graphs of exponential functions. We need to discuss some characteristics of exponential functions to begin with, talking about graphs. First, they are one to one. Second, the horizontal asymptote of something of the form f of x equals a times b to the x is y equals zero. Now that function could be shifted up and down, which would, could change that. So keep that in mind. Our domain is negative infinity to infinity, and our range is zero to infinity. So we are above the x-axis and the asymptote of y equals zero, we approach zero. Notice in either of these two graphs, we're approaching zero, but we never actually or we never actually attain that value. Because of that fact, we do not have an x-intercept, but our y-intercept is our initial value, a, and our function will be increasing going to the right if our b, our growth factor, is greater than one and decreasing if b is less than one. Now remember, b must be greater than zero, so it cannot be, it has to be between zero and one. So let's sketch this function, f of x equals 0.25 to the x. The domain, range, and asymptote is what needed here. Our domain is negative infinity to infinity, and very little will actually change that. All right, and our range, because this is just of the form a times b to the x, it will be zero to infinity. Our horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. Now, we will have our asymptote, I can go ahead and sketch on here, is going to approach the x-axis. All right, now, let's take some points. First off, the a value, is one here, and the b value is one fourth. The b value is one fourth, and that is less than one, which means this will be decreasing. So we'll start with the y-intercept, zero a. Let's go ahead and plug some points in. So we have zero, one, that's a given. Because it's decreasing, I want values that are to the left, so I'm going to go to negative 1 and negative 2. 0.25 to the negative 1 is going to be 4, negative 1, 4. And negative 2, 0.25 to the negative 2 is going to be 16, which I can't graph on this grid, but it looks like our graph will be doing something of this nature. So it matches the second graph because our b value is less than one. Now we can shift our parent function a bit in the same way that we could shift functions previously in chapter three. So if it has, if we have a shift of plus d, that'll shift vertically based on the same sign as d. So if it's plus, it goes up, and if it is subtraction, it, is go, it shifts down vertically. We can have a horizontal shift left and right, and it's the opposite direction of that sign. Okay, so if it's x plus two, that means to the left. If it's x minus two, it's to the right. The y-intercept becomes zero b to the c plus d. If you notice, if you plug zero in for x, that's just what we get. So we'll plug zero in to find the y-intercept. The horizontal asymptote becomes y equals d based on that shift. The range then becomes d to infinity, and the domain remains unchanged. So we're going to sketch f of x equals 2 to the x plus 1 minus 3. The domain will remain unchanged. This is shifted down 3, so our range should be negative 3 to infinity with a horizontal asymptote of y equals negative 3. So we'll go ahead and sketch the horizontal asymptote. Now our y-intercept, if we evaluate this at 0, will be 0, 2 to the 0 plus 1 minus 3. I'll just do that. 
So our y-intercept is minus 1, so it is 0 minus 1. zero minus one. Now our growth factor, our growth factor is two. Okay, so we can possibly grab another point. Actually, we might just use another point. Let's do negative one. So there is no, well this will actually have an x-intercept. So we'll go with the x value of negative one. So that will be two to the zero minus three, which will be minus three. Negative one, negative three. That can't be right, that's one, huh? Minus two. Minus two. Negative one, negative two. So from that we can gather what that graph is going to do. Let's see, how about at 1? 2 to the 1, no, 2 to the 2, minus 3, that will be 1. So we have the point 1, 1, just that right there. So that seems to fit that pattern nicely. All right, example 3, solve this equation graphically and round to the nearest thousandth. So what we'll do for this, 42 equals 1.2 times 5 to the x plus 2.8. We'll evaluate, we won't evaluate, we will graph each side of this equation separately. So this will be my y1 in my function, and this will be y2. So y1, y2. Once they're graphed, I will go to second calc, again my TI calculator, select 5 for intersection, Press enter twice to select the two functions we have on there. Now if you notice, they're actually not both graphed on here. Okay, y equals 42 is somewhere up here. So I can't see it, however it'll still find the intersection. So I can press enter twice and then once again to make a, a guess. And the resulting x value will be my solution. So solving that equation, I get x equals 2.2 and we'll round to this near a thousandth, 2.166. Just go ahead and write the approximation there. Example four, we're going to sketch f of x equals four times one and a half to the x. So this is our initial, our initial amount initial value, which is our y-intercept. So we can begin there. So that is 0, 4. Now let's go ahead and determine our domain because we need that. We'll need to be familiar with determining the domain and range without the graph, without using a calculator, we should be able to figure this out. This is not shifted, so 0 to infinity is the range. And our horizontal asymptote is y equals 0, since, again, there's no shifting up or down. We have that as our asymptote. Now, we have a 1 half that's less than 1, but bigger than 0, as it should be. That actually means that as we go from left to right, every unit of change, we're multiplying our outputs by one half. So we should now have a function value at one, two, because our a is four and our b is one half. At two, then at one, then at one half, etc., and it will approach that. Now at negative one, negative one, that will be eight. So we can use that point as well. It will go in that manner. Function will, should appear just like that graph or similar as it is a sketch. Example five, find and graph the equation for the function g of x that reflects f of x equals one fourth to the x about the x axis. 
we are reflecting across this axis, which means we are flipping our y values, our outputs is what's changing. So we'll make those outputs negative. Well, let's go ahead and write the domain now that we have that, that, that going on. Domain is still unchanged. The range, because it's going to be reflected across, that's going to be negative infinity to zero rather than zero to infinity. Now this function still does not have any shifting up or down, so y equals zero is our asymptote. All right, our initial value is minus one, and our decay factor is one fourth. So we have that point there. We're approaching the x-axis going to the right because it's a decay, decay factor. And let's go ahead and find some function values. We know that at zero, it's minus one. At minus one, minus two. It's approaching the x-axis going to the right, so we'll go to the left. All right, so that would be minus four. minus four, and then to the negative two, so that'll be 16, so minus 16, negative one, negative four, negative two, 16, so it's approaching that value there, and approaching the x-axis going to the right. Our last question here is to write the equation for this function, give the horizontal asymptote, the domain, and the range. So f of x equals e to the x, so we have a base of e, is vertically stretched by a factor of 2, reflected across the y-axis, and then shifted up 4 units. All right, so let's go ahead and put our factor there, e to the x plus c plus d. We'll have something of this form. Being vertically stretched by 2, indicates that a equals 2, and being shifted up 4 units indicates that d is plus 4, so 2, and there's no shifting left and right, so it's still e to the x plus 4. Now reflecting across the x, or the y-axis, is changing our inputs. Okay, it's taking the negative, the opposite of our of our input, so this should be 2e to the negative x. Let's call this g of x. Now for our domain, negative infinity to infinity, our range, since we are reflecting across the y-axis, our range does not change, and our horizontal asymptote is y equals 4 because we are shifting up 4. Now, just as with transformations previously, all of those rules still apply, f of x plus h, f of x plus k, all of those rules apply, so if you need to, go back and refresh. I believe that is in, it's toward the end of chapter 3, I know that. Now, also be familiar and be ready to identify the domain, the range, and the horizontal asymptote given an equation. Those are the big things in this section.